And here we are in Studio 322. Thank you for joining us on TNT as we head around Australia. Well, not quite around Australia, but we're down south in an area called Gippsland on a little spot called Raymond Island, which is full of kangaroos and other local animals. We'll show you some of those very soon. But uh, to get started today, there's nothing else really to talk about except the big floods and the big floods that are affecting uh, many parts of Thailand at the moment. But uh, before we even get to the floods, there's more on the way. So I think we should talk about that. This is a synoptic chart. You can see there we've got uh, a typhoon. Well, it will be a typhoon, they say, by the time it gets to the Vietnamese coast. Uh, so that's the synoptic chart from the Thai Meteorological Department. Here we can see in a bit greater detail We've got uh, that orange spot in the middle there. That's where the typhoon is at this moment. And it's tracked across the top of the uh, top of the Philippines. You can see there in green, now making its way in orange. It'll scoot under Hainan Island and then cross the Vietnamese border. Uh, and it'll just sort of scoot across the top of Thailand. But by the time it gets to Thailand, it will be a tropical depression and uh, peter out but it will still once again bring a whole lot of rain to Thailand in an area that really just does not need it at the moment. We go to uh, this report from Thai PBS World. Tropical storm becomes typhoon as it approaches Vietnam. It's expected to make landfall in Vietnam on Wednesday or Thursday. And at the moment it's packing wind speeds of 100 kilometres per hour located in the South China Sea, moving west at 20 kilometres an hour. The fourth paragraph down there, the department warned people living in southern Thailand to brace for heavy to very heavy rain, rough seas and strong winds in the Andaman Sea in the Gulf of Thailand. So uh, more bad weather on the way and that weather system, while it may not necessarily pack a lot of wind when it gets to Thailand, will certainly suck in a lot of water, or moisture, and uh, cold air from the Indian Ocean to uh, what's happening up in Ubon Ratchatani. A loss of water retention areas worsens floods in Ubon Ratchatani. The loss of natural water retention areas through a lack of proper urban planning is being blamed for the unusually serious flooding in the northeastern province. Down the bottom there, the water level in the Mun River, which flows through Ubon Ratchatani province, is falling slightly and steadily, anticipated that it will drop below its banks in mid-November. Villagers there saying that apart from human hardships, there are about 500,000 cattle and poultry which are now, now starving. So a real problem developing up there. And it seems that a lot of the man-made developments and changes, uh, for example, in Bangkok, getting rid of the other uh, natural canals is really exacerbating a lot of these uh, flooding situations and the ability of the water to escape and get to a lower area. So I think there's going to be a lot of people looking at that uh, very shortly and uh, as we sort of struggle forward. Now, the reason I'm struggling a bit this morning is it is freezing. Now, my freezing, I'm sure, is very different from a lot of other people's freezing. Anything below 20 degrees Celsius is about as far as I'll go. But uh, I think it's around about uh, 10 or 12 here at the moment. But the sun is out and you can see it's all very bright and sunny in the background there, but I am freezing. Uh, anyway, to the main story, I suppose, from the weekend, and this was the incredible flooding, uh, quite surprising flooding across Phuket. Phuket Go reports, uh, heavy rains wreak havoc across Phuket. Heavy rains came across the island, but not just little localised areas on the island, and I've been there for 11 years, and we get these floods from time to time, but this really covered the whole island. Uh, and we can see from that story, uh, that there were some warnings up the top there. Due to excessive flooding across the island, provincial authorities recommend arriving to the uh, airport three to four hours prior to your flight departure. And the road to the airport could take two to three times longer than normal due to flooding on sections of Tepkasatri Road. Tepkasatri is the main sort of north-south uh, artery on the island. And uh, yeah, it was all very well telling people to get there three or four hours before their flights, and there was a lot of flight disruption in Phuket yesterday. 
but people were having trouble just getting to the airport in the first place. But I have to say that the authorities in Phuket are going through a, a lot of photos and videos yesterday. They've done an incredible job getting roads open and clearing up uh, the mess in like 24 hours. We'll get to some photos. Uh, here's just a bit of a photo essay. These photos, by the way, are from News Hawk Phuket. And uh, we can see some of the poor tourists struggling through waters there in Phuket Town. Phuket Town is uh, the, well, I suppose you'd call it the main city. I use the term city loosely. On the east side or the opposite side of the island to Patong. Many tourists heading down to Phuket over the weekend. It was a four day long weekend and a lot of domestic tourism was uh, making its way down there. And of course, traders and tourism operators looking forward to people getting down to the island and spending some money. And they had this flood instead. Uh, so more photos there, Phuket town, people struggling. And uh, once again, just saying these photos have come from News Hawk Phuket their Facebook page. Sandbags being delivered there by the Marine Police. And just to show that uh, it's not the first time it's happened, uh, this is a photo taken, I don't know what year it would be, I'm guessing it's uh, sort of the uh, 30s or 40s. And in the background there, that's the On On Hotel. The On On Hotel in Phuket Town, old Phuket Town, was the uh, sort of the set used in the opening part of the movie The Beach, made in 2000, which featured, amongst other things, Maya Bay. But uh, the On On Hotel there, uh, you can see, was a pretty shabby place back in those days. I think it was one of the very early hotels in Phuket Town. Would have been a rollicking old town in those days. And flooding out the front there, uh, showing that it's not the first time that it's happened. By the way, the On On Hotel has all been done up. It's sort of a nice little boutique hotel now. If you are staying in old Phuket town at some stage, I can recommend the On On Hotel. Used to have a good breakfast as well. I'm not sure if that's happening anymore. Also a big landslide there, that landslide there uh, on the Patong to Kamala Road. And that has, I understand, been cleared, but uh, that was a massive amount of dirt lying right across the road. And I know authorities worked hard to try and get uh, that cleared pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, massive amount of landslide dirt there across the Patong to Kamala Road yesterday. And that is Tep Kasatri Road. I can't quite make out exactly where that is. But you can see uh, that's the main north-south artery and uh, not many people getting through. I understand that people can get through most of Tep Kasat 3 Road now. So some big floods in Phuket over the weekend. Even in Patong, the party town, you can see there uh, Bangla Road, the entrance to Bangla Road. A motorcycle there pretty much submerged and not sure if uh, that's gonna start terribly well when they get to it. Uh, okay, oh yes, yeah. so, so the Bangkok Post reporting chaotic Sunday in Phuket, and flooding cripples air travel in Phuket as incoming passengers can't reach their homes or hotels. Outbound travelers struggle to get to the airport. Buses run normally, and over here we've got air travel in Phuket disrupted by floods, intercity buses not affected. So that sort of concludes our meteorological section of TNT today. Uh, we're going to take you on a very quick tour of this beautiful little island where I've been over the weekend in just a moment. But this is TNT, thanks to Five Star Marine. I don't think they're going to be doing many tours today, a few days out from uh, tours. But once the weather improves, make sure you check in with Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description to this video. And please, if you get an opportunity, subscribe to our channel and uh, we enjoy bringing the news to you every day. This is the TNT program, uh, TNT on tour. We're on Raymond Island in the south part of Victoria. So very briefly, if you get onto a, or into a car and travel southeast for about four hours, you go through the towns of uh, Taralgon and Morwell and Moe 
and Sale and Bairnsdale and then eventually you'll arrive at Paynesville which you can sort of see across the other side there and you get onto a car ferry and about two minutes later you'll arrive on Raymond Island which has got a permanent population of around about 450 to 500 so I'm told or uh, during the summer it'll get up to around about 2,000. But even 2,000 people is nothing compared with the wildlife on this island. Try as I might, I couldn't find any koalas, but we did find kangaroos. Plenty of kangaroos mulling around parts of the island. I'm not sure of the kangaroo population. I didn't go and count them, nor did I ask the kangaroos, but they were quite happy to pose for the cameras. But uh, riding around the island on the bike, we did see an echidna and uh, it wasn't really going to show its face, but uh, an echidna, very easy to spot sitting on the side of the road. So uh, that's Raymond Island, a very pleasant little place to come. Sleepy Hollow, I think you'd probably call it, but uh, it was great to come down here, visit some very good friends, appreciate their hospitality, sitting on their veranda at this moment. You're watching the TNT program, and we'll get back to some news. And Boom Jai Tai aims high this story from the Bangkok Post. The party targets 120 seats, backed by cash and a solid candidate lineup. So 120 seats, there's 500 seats up for grabs in the, uh, the Thai lower house, made up of 500 seats in the lower house and 250 senators. Uh, we won't bother talking about the Senators today. So uh, we are definitely in some sort of election mode with an election looking like it's going to be held early May next year. And uh, this story, Mr. Newen. Now, Mr. Newen is uh, sort of the party head kicker, the, the number cruncher, the person who goes out, knocks on doors and say, hey, get in with the, uh, the good times. Uh, he says that uh, he wants to help Mr. Anaton, that's Anaton Shavirakun, who is the public health minister. A lot of local cars rushing off to the ferry, I think, to catch the ferry across to the mainland. So uh, he's saying that he wants to help Anaton Shavirakun become the next prime minister, a target of winning 120 seats. Uh, so yeah, if they do get 120 seats, there's little doubt that uh, he will pretty much have a mandate to be picked as the next Prime Minister. But a lot of water to go under the bridge before we get to the next election. A lot of issues still to be discussed. And of course, you've still got Palang up the current coalition. And I'm sure they've got a few aces up their sleeve as we approach the election. But my tip is still that the two opposition parties, the Per Thai, and the, uh, what are they called? The Move Forward Party will probably together be able to get a majority of seats. That's all to come. Uh, just another bit of a weather story. Pangna's Similan National Park closed for three days as the monsoon blows in. This story from nationthailand.com. And the Similan Islands National Park in Pangna will close to visitors until tomorrow to protect tourists from strong winds and waves. They're saying down the bottom there, heavy rain and strong winds are forecast for the Andaman coast over the next few days. So the beautiful Similan Islands off uh, the coast of Kaolak there closed down until at least tomorrow. And uh, they've been able to get most of the tourists uh, back to shore nice and safely. A uh, very sad story here, uh, another outcome from the Mountain Bee Fire. The Inferno has claimed its 25th victim. A 26-year-old woman yesterday became the 25th victim of the deadly blaze at the Mountain B pub in Satahip in early August. The lady was pronounced dead at the Chula Longkorn Hospital in Bangkok following 72 days of treatment for severe burns suffered in the August 5th Inferno. 13 victims were killed originally and then 12 more have since succumbed to their injuries and talked about another horrible fire back in 2009 at the Santika pub in Bangkok. That one killed 67 people and left 32 severely injured. An investigation showed in that Santika fire that it had no signs for fire exits or emergency lights for escape routes 
and uh, the owner and the company hired to install the lighting system, both sentenced to three years jail. There haven't been a, a trial yet for the people involved with the Mountain Bee Fire. When that uh, does happen, of course, we'll keep you up to date. And with that, I think that's it. Yes, it is. That's all we've got on today's TNT. Hopefully we've brought you up to date. I'm going to race inside, have a hot cup of coffee and sit on the heater for half an hour and try and thaw out a very cool day down here. But it's been great having you with us. Thanks for taking our trip uh, to Raymond Island. Tomorrow we'll be making our way up the coast towards Sydney. Probably get to Sydney by about Thursday. But we're taking the road trip the little Toyota hybrid car we've got and uh, we'll see if we can head up north and uh, well avoid some of the flooding that's been happening here in Victoria and New South Wales in Australia as well. Seems to be following me around. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you to Five Star Marine and we'll see you again tomorrow.